Japanese people are famous for being polite, but tourists and some YouTubers are pushing them to their breaking point and spoiling it for the rest of us. Keep watching to find out why. This upcoming April the 1st, the Japanese government is restricting tourist access to private property, including those very famous alleys in Kyoto's Gion district, home to the world-renowned geishas. Why? because some foreign tourists have to spoil it for the rest of us by acting really obnoxiously. Let's clear something up. Geishas aren't adult workers. They're highly skilled female entertainers and artists who dedicate their lives to preserving traditional Japanese arts like dance, music, and tea ceremonies. Their beautiful kimonos and makeup are a part of that tradition. I get the appeal of wanting photos, but some tourists have gone too far, blocking geishas paths, chasing them down the street, and even trying to touch them and rip their dresses. Imagine trying to do your job with people treating you like a Disneyland character. Not only is this behaviour rude, but it disrespects the centuries old tradition of geisha and makes it difficult for them to perform their duties as artists and cultural ambassadors. These areas hold deep historical significance for Japan, and tourists need to understand that. On top of that, Kyoto's getting overrun with tourists, making locals feel like they live in a theme park. This disrupts their daily lives, increases noise pollution, and strains local resources. It's important to remember that Kyoto is a living city, not just a tourist destination. The Japanese people don't want to impose restrictions, but years of this behaviour have left them desperate. Now, there'll be signs in the Gion district highlighting certain streets, a private property, and anyone ignoring the warnings in Japanese and in English can face a fine of around 70 US dollars. Whilst it's not much, I hope this is enough to stop people taking the piss. Japan is a wonderful place, and it would be a shame if a few bad apples spoil it for everyone. And speaking of bad apples, take the 17-year-old tourist who carved his name into a sacred pillar at the Tosho Daiji Temple, a UNESCO-listed site over a thousand years old. It seems like he wasn't thinking. A careless act that could have gotten him in serious trouble in Japan. Sadly, this kind of thoughtless behaviour is becoming too common. Tourists are treating sacred spaces like the Tosho Daiji Temple as their personal playgrounds, instead of respecting their history and cultural significance. And then there are YouTubers like Johnny Somali. This guy makes me cringe on behalf of all decent YouTubers in Japan. His mission is to piss off as many Japanese people as possible just for views. He's filmed himself on trains yelling, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, we'll do it again. It's disgusting. He's referencing the atomic bombs dropped on those cities during World War II. On another occasion, he entered a construction site without permission just to annoy the workers. He's not only been fined around 1,400 USD for causing issues at Osaka restaurants, but also received jail time. And the thing is, he didn't even learn his lesson. After leaving Japan, he got beaten up in Tel Aviv for causing problems there too. Unfortunately, some people see travel as an excuse to ignore basic decency. YouTubers like this guy are exploiting Japan for views and attention, without any regard for the real impact this behaviour has on Japanese people. I just wanted to take a brief moment to ask you that if you're enjoying this video, please hit the subscribe button, because it'll mean a lot to me. Thank you. Transitioning from the discussion of problematic YouTubers like Johnny Somali to another example of disrespectful behaviour in Japan, let's delve into trouble caused by some tourists participating in go-kart racing experiences on real roads in Tokyo. While these accidents can cause serious injuries and property damage, additionally reckless driving creates a stressful and unsafe environment for residents who have to navigate the roads. For example, various companies in Tokyo offer go-kart racing experiences on real roads. All riders need a valid driver's license, but unfortunately, common sense isn't always common. 
Some drivers get it out at traffic lights to take pictures, causing congestion. Most go-kart accidents are caused by tourists, and some of who come from countries that drive on the opposite side of the road to Japan. There have been hit and runs, and even drivers who have smashed into shop walls. Organisations are trying to limit the damage with designated routes, and police are asking companies to ban cell phone use while driving. This behaviour creates safety hazards and disruptions for local residents. It's unfair to the people who live in these areas to constantly deal with the fallout of disrespectful tourists. Just like the forgetful teen at the temple, some go-kart drivers seem oblivious to the potential consequences of their actions. A little more thought and respect for the culture and surroundings would go a long way. With all this said, it's easy to see why Japan is getting fed up. I hope new measures like fines deter bad behaviour and allow Japan's tourist economy to continue in a more respectful way. Japan wants tourists, but not at the cost of their culture. We need to remember that we're guests in Japan. A bit of research and awareness of local customs can go a long way. Let's strive to be respectful tourists so that Japan's incredible culture and people can be enjoyed by both visitors and locals for years to come. Of course, there are people who strive to follow the rules and respect the culture. And to those people, I thank you. Let's show Japan that most visitors appreciate their amazing country as much as they do. If you enjoyed watching this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy one of my other videos here. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.